a little bit of a change from the ferreting footage that I've been posting so far on the channel. Today, what I want to show you is a project rifle that I picked up a little while ago. It's a Browning SA-22, so as the name suggests, it's a semi-automatic T2LR. This particular one is made by FN in Belgium, and they've been made by Remington and Roku among others over the years. Uh, initially put into production, I think it was 1914, and they're still being made today, which says a lot about the design really, if the rifle's still being made a century later. Quite a few features on it are set apart from the modern semi-auto, like a Ruger 22 or something like that. Firstly, the magazine is in a box mag that's removable, it's a tube mag in the back of the stock. This one holds eight rounds and it loads through a port on the back of the stock just behind the pistol grip. Second difference, the action ejects downwards rather than out to the side. For me, it's a big benefit, I'm a left-handed shooter. What this means is I don't get the dust in the case blowing back across my face when I'm shooting it, so you know, we're, we're going down instead. However, the, the flip of that is if you're wearing a top that's got loose cuffs, then you do tend to get hot cases dropping down your sleeves, which isn't the most pleasant sensation in the world. Another feature of this gun that I really like is the fact that it's a takedown rifle. Um, it's small, pointable, lightweight, comes apart in seconds, and it's just it's, it's just got a really, it's got a lot of character. That's, I think that's what I like about it. It's it's quirky by modern standards, um, and it is a bit of a design classic as well, really. My plans for this particular one, it's not in the greatest of cosmetic conditions, so it's a bit of a three-stage attack. Uh, step one, strip, clean, polish the inside to just get it cycling nice and consistent, because it does get the occasional jam at the moment. Step two, to address the woodwork, uh, it needs stripping, some scratches and chips and dents, addressing as best I can. I'm not going to get it perfect, but I'll make it look a damn sight better than it's looking at the moment. Re-oil, um, I'll probably use a, a stain like an alkane oil or something like that to try and bring the grain out and then give it a fair few coats of um, true oil or Danish oil, something like that over the top to you know give it a decent hard wearing finish. Third and final, the actual action block itself. A previous owner has scribed the name into one side of the case, so that needs to be polished out, but it's going to mean the whole block will have to come back to bare metal as well, because it won't match back in again if I try and refinish it. Once that's done and I've got it refinished, then I need to look at the three holes that are threaded in the top of the action. Um, they've clearly been for use for a scope rail at some point in the gun's life, so I'm currently trying to decide whether to put another rail back on top or to fill the holes with some grub screws. Not too sure, I'm going to have a word with a local gunsmith and see what he thinks. Um, I know putting a weaver rail on top of this rifle is going to kind of spoil the look of it, but having a weaver rail and quick detach mounts might give me the option of using a scope, which I quite like the idea of. I'll post some videos and pictures and things as well as a finished article um, video when I get around to doing them, get around to doing all the bits of work, so if you like what you see and you want to see something a little bit different, uh, hit subscribe and you'll see its transformation over the next couple of months.